Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus and then quickly going into Gemini. That's what I'd like to talk about. I'd like to also say something about the Neptune conjunct Saturn, Saturn conjunct Neptune at zero Aries. And I'd like to share a couple of thoughts on Pluto going in and out of Aquarius. So Jupiter conjunct Uranus, 1027 p.m., Saturday, April 20th. That's Eastern Standard Time, 727 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. So if you hear a dog in the background, he's not into the Saturn-Neptune aspects, but he likes the Jupiter-Uranus. Okay, so Jupiter-Uranus, let's talk about that a little bit. That's a 14-year cycle, and what's happening along with the Jupiter conjunct Uranus is kind of Mercury-Venus, especially Venus, hitting a midpoint of Mars-Jupiter, and Mars Uranus, really, within a few days. So this whole time period, we can feel it already for months. Um, but the 19th and 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, into the full moon, four degrees Scorpio, on April 23rd. <clears throat> and then I like the idea that Mercury's going retrograde because it means... Maybe <laughs> that people would look within themselves to find deeper meaning and what, what makes them feel alive. As you know, in my astrological aspects, the art, the book I have, I make a big deal of a higher and lower octave. a higher and lower octave to all the planets in their aspects. Thus, Jupiter Uranus, which is associated with the French Revolution, 1788-89, and uh, before that, the Declaration of Independence, the, the war um, with England, and... Jupiter Uranus conjuncts every 14 years, but you know, it gets a little rarer when it's in what sign it's in and what air. There's a whole it's a whole complicated thing, but basically the Jupiter Uranus is higher love and appreciation of the social identity. It's technological breakthroughs. You know, it's associated with revolution and civil rights. I mean, 1968-69, right after the Summer of Love, comes this civil rights movement, Vietnam, troubles, you know, university students and, and uprisings with uh, complaints about money. The black power thing comes out, liberation, women's liberation, gay liberation, It's a very strong time for civil rights and revolution. Got a revolution. And, <clears throat> and you know, a breakthrough with music, in a way, as a medium for both partying and complaining and idealizing a better future. So, you have, like, Tenement Square, 1989, in the falling of the Berlin Wall. So there's that that comes with the Saturn Neptune. Uh, but I'm probably jumping too much here. The Jupiter Uranus, I just want to say there's a higher and lower octave to everything. Mars can be courage, but it can be fighting and arguing. And it can be bravado of the archangels or Buddha compassion, but it could also be no compassion. It's like the it's up to us in out of our own freedom to invoke and spark ourselves to the higher octave, <clears throat> the virtuous possibilities of these planets, speaking to our heart, 
souls and our mind and entering into our actions to make the world a better place. I mean, that's the whole thing about astrology is looking for a cosmology and a, a higher octave, uh, a planetary timing and rhythm that we could identify with. And all the planets represent the non-virtues or the virtues, depending on how you can activate your relationship to the planets and timing. So with Jupiter Uranus, you have the war of 1775-76, the War of Independence, and the Revolutionary War, right? Um, there's a lot of talk, without getting carried away with it, there's a lot of talk about the Pluto going into Aquarius and <clears throat> Uranus in Gemini and Neptune going into Aries and how it's these these configurations in planetary geometry are associated historically with with the Revolutionary War and the Civil War and the World War. So the higher octave would be to not have a war and to have creative arts and freedom of culture, cultural freedom and art and and a, a kind of a reemergence of a sacred sense of holiness or religion in our relationship to each other and the land and to the invisible octaves of higher virtue. So, I want to talk about that Jupiter conjunct Uranus and it's most interesting the is happening at late Taurus, which is kind of amazing because late Taurus is associated with the very rich. And so when you have Jupiter Uranus, you know, we, we definitely need a change of mind with the super, super rich putting some cap, either voluntary cap or we have to collectively decide on some kind of cap on on how rich a person can get before they become some kind of weird tyrant. I mean, if we can't figure out a way to have democracy and equal, uh, a more equal distribution of resource resource and educational possibility and wealth, then let's be honest, we're looking for a benevolent dictator. Either we're looking for a, a social catalyst and raising of consciousness on individual and collective social level for healing and and peacemaking and prosperity and education and helping the poor and the sick to get healed or educated. Uh, th there's a disparity when it comes to money, you know, and in, in anthroposophical Rudolf Steiner terms, there's, you know, he talks about how a better world might come into existence if we understood how to have freedom in our thinking, freedom in our cultural, we could, that we're free to debate without attacking each other. We leave the other person free. We give the other person the freedom that we ourselves would like. I think it was the Christian <clears throat> and the Buddhist, really, but you know the Christian motif of love your neighbor as yourself and that God is love. God isn't love and just kissing. God is love in the sense of compassion and acknowledgement of each other's divine possibility and proclivity, the awakening spirit within our soul, within our body, within our life around us. And so the Jupiter Uranus represents, like it's also like the, it represents freedom and social conscience and a reawakening of wonder and awe and wanting to take joy in, in renewal, not just having something that's new. That's, that's a big difference. So that's probably the higher and lower octave right there. And the fact that Venus is midpointing Mars-Jupiter with Mercury hanging out and Uranus, we're talking about one of the most positive times possibly. I mean, it can go bad, right? It can be solar flares and quakes and storms and whatever whatever happens is real sudden and it's over sudden unless we make it last. So the Jupiter Uranus, which we've been experiencing for months coming and for months afterwards, um, is associated with 
America wanting freedom. And now remember, it's also a 14-year cycle. So it represents puberty. It represents teenage, pissed-off punk music, uh, maybe. It represents people acting like teenagers. Boy, we see that a lot, don't we? In, when you look at um, when you look at the t- TV, which I don't, <laughs> but I look at the computer and the news, and you can see what's going on. That a lot of a lot of folks are are teenage, pissed off, and angry, and one upmanship and outdoing and jokesters that <clears throat> the humor doesn't bring enlightenment. It's it's at best irony and at worst it's putting people down um for some kind of short lived pleasure. And so the Jupiter Uranus is partying and loud music and food and craziness and zaniness and all the comedians come out and the party guys and it can be pretty crazy. It can be pretty wild. And it can be uh, stormy. Now, on the positive side, it's a whole shift in gears of the social identity where you know how you go to the the seasonal festivals of Hanukkah um, or Christmas, Passover, Easter. We have all these different July 4th. We have all American ones, July 4th, um, Santa Claus, New Year's, Happy New Year's, Halloween. So the Jupiter Uranus represents this this shift of gears where the people that used to run the festivals are getting older or they die or they're standing back and new people are running things. And as you know, if you keep up with me, um, 300 of the best astrologers, according to Wall Street Journal, <laughs> predicted that Trump would lose that first election there and that Mrs. Clinton would win. And they told me that I wasn't going to be in the article because I was predicting Trump, not only the run before he was running, but I was predicting that he'd win. So afterwards, I was talking to people Whoa, way up in the political system, hoping that Mrs. Clinton could come back. And I was predicting that she wouldn't come back or she would lose and that Trump would lose the next election to whoever ran. And that's when Biden won. Okay, so now I'm predicting a very difficult prediction because Trump does have really amazing aspects. And in the future, I'll tell you the exact aspects that I'm looking at because when I predicted he'd win, I was using the progressed sun on his ascending sign. Well, now I've discovered like some very interesting aspects that make me think that he'll lose the next election. Even though if he wins, I'm not going to be upset with myself. This is a tough call. And I'm predicting that if Biden can make it to the election, he might win by a thin margin. But I'm thinking that Gavin Newsom is going to be the next president, that he, that, that the, the present president will step down for one reason or another. And a lot of crazy stuff is about to happen in the world, which has been happening, right? I, again, if you look at my TikTok talks, I know it sounds crazy, but I have a lot of little short meditation techniques and creative visualizations where we visualize the Christ within every heart and mind, you know, the Buddha, nature of compassion and loving kindness and patience and perseverance and generosity and enthusiasm and concentration and meditation. The, T- the Tibetan Buddhists and the regular Zen guys they, in Osho, they have it down, you know, for spiritual practice that we could we could well be advised to apply to our Western hermetic spiritual scientific techniques. If you're a materialist and believe in just materialistic science, please take a look at Rudolf Steiner's on Rudolf Steiner Archives or Rudolf Steiner Audio or buy the book at Mayflower Bookshop on the origins of natural science. And there's another book on natural science that Steiner has. It's really great. And it it gives you a really great insight into the problems we have with modern science, separating uh, a plant, for instance, or an animal from its natural environment. So there's no more rhythms of the earth or rhythms of the stars and planets and weather that 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 and it goes all the way to like food that's grown very quickly with chemicals that the plants and the food is the the vegetables and grains are prematurely spiritualized even animals they're just fed all that they need to get big and fat fast and growth hormones when it went into the animals is kind of timed where obesity became a problem right 
because people are eating these growth hormones in the cows. It's a really big problem. I don't want to get lost in that. If we have the fire with our, within our belly and our heart and our mind to transform these things, it'd be great. Whether, you know, that we could overcome the toxicity. But if we can't overcome the toxicity, we should remove the toxicity. You know, and, and there's a lot of research on gluten. People are gluten sensitive, but are they? Or is it the pesticides and the Roundup and the, the weird pesticides that are in the wheat? A lot of people think that. So we have a problem with, um, as, as a person I know, Marianne Williamson, who's running for president, she has a big thing on health. If you find Marianne 2024, Dot com, <clears throat> she has platforms on and a very strong, common sense Thomas Paine type, Jefferson type, Roosevelt type statements about money, power, authority, health, education, child care, welfare, taking care of the elders. I mean, taking care of the land, air, and water. I mean, you should check it out. It's a lot of things I've been saying for a long time, and she's way more articulate. Um, and exact with facts, like she's like a more modern day fun Chomsky, basically, you know, I mean, and and maybe even a bit of Christopher Hitchens in the sense of uh, cutting right through to the point. Anyway, I didn't mean to harp on her. I, she's beautiful and smart, and you should check her out. We should check everyone out who's got creative, positive ideas to help the future. That's what we want. We don't want to just character assassinate everyone and and gossip you know people will put down H.P. Blavatsky who founded the Theosophical Society and they'll put her down and but they won't read her I mean they can't quote her that's pretty weird when you're I think it's pretty weird when you're putting someone down and you don't don't quote Osho and you don't quote Steiner <clears throat> or Marianne Williamson so I'm asking you to join me and do a little homework and study. Sacrifice your addictions and your bad habits on the altar of your heart, on the altar of common sense humanity. Sacrifice your negative habits if you can and pray that you'll, you'll receive higher virtuous talents and capacities and intelligence and, and higher love that, that will transform the world around you, whether you have the words or not for it. We live in a world where intellect can create bombs, but they can't create peace. The, only the heart, the in, intelligence connected to the heart through the breath. And I talk about that a lot. So anyway, I'm getting a little bit lost here. I'm sorry about that. Let's get back to Jupiter conjunct Uranus um, in Taurus. So is this like some kind of like brazen, novel, daring, new currency or transformation of our currency or us really discovering what we want to do with credit cards and how we're going to handle that and is there going to be a cashless society or not and is it bitcoin or some other way um was were all those cryptocurrencies practiced for the government uh having their own <coughs> version and what a waste of electricity what an amazing pollute, pollution the war machine, you know, the industrial complex of commercialism and pharmaceutical, you know, the wastewater, the air, the overgunned out. I mean, unless we have a raising of consciousness where we don't hurt each other, we need to keep creating laws. All the laws are made because somebody hurt somebody and they're trying to make laws that prevent that. And... We're living in difficult times. I want to remind you of something I've been telling a lot of people, and you may have heard me say it before. <clears throat> Look at how many people we know pour out their heart about their opinion about politics, money, future, religion, government, love. Look at how much people talk and share and how much talk there is on radio and TV and the internet. But I dare challenge you in the last several years, has anybody changed their opinion one bit? 
pretty much no one's changed their opinion. And that means that we're wasting our time sharing all that information. Okay, so nonetheless, that means that we're entertaining, eh? We're just entertaining each other. If you're just entertaining each other, you should get paid better. The entertainers can get paid pretty good. Okay, so let's keep going. So Jupiter and Uranus are going to go into Gemini. So when Jupiter leaves Taurus and goes into Gemini in the coming months, what's going to happen? Well, there's going to be, for the last year, Jupiter and Gemini, in Taurus, Jupiter and Taurus has been cling, clinging to what makes us feel secure. And it's better to have uh, a bad lover or house or a bad job, then no job, no lover, no house, you know. So it's a, that's one level. On the upper level, Jupiter Taurus is some people are getting richer and solidifying their security and what makes them happy and who their friends are and who they aren't. And what's your favorite chair? You don't need five of them. What's your favorite? So you don't need five of them, whatever. You get it? And when Jupiter goes into Gemini, there's going to be a switch where the things that make us happy aren't going to be things. It's going to be, it's going to actually be our conversations and our mental intelligence, the sharing of the intelligence of the heart and mind with other people. It's a more activated, the Gemini thing is going, now the negative side of Gemini is that Jupiter and Gemini is, there's even more talk. <laughs> As we go toward the election, there's going to be a lot of talk. But hopefully because in Gemini, it's going to be a little more meaningful and exciting, or at the very minimum, way more entertaining. So, so, so there's kind of like an, an idea of like people wanting freedom and independence, and they don't want barriers and walls and obstructions. And, <clears throat> and th th there is a bit of like in the French Revolution, there was a bit of like scapegoating and projecting negativity out. And so there was this idea that if we just get rid of this or that person, we're all going to be happy. And then when you're not happy, you keep getting rid of people. And the French Revolution got way carried away, just killing people at the top. It's a very deep and long conversation to talk about the esoteric implications of the American Revolution and War of Independence. And Russia and China, which start falling into play in these next two or three years, something has to be resolved here. Either we're heading for a world war or world pollution or world vampire waste of money with the military industrial complex and this incredible crass consumerism without regard for the future. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to bum you out. I'm just trying to say we all agree there's problems. We might disagree on the details. And all I'm saying is that astrologically, 23, 24, since the last Jupiter, Saturn conjunct in Aquarius on winter solstice back. And this whole idea of Pluto going into Aquarius, Jupiter and Uranus going to Gemini to trine that point, by the way. We're coming to a great conclusion and ending of modern civilization as we know it. A new world needs to be born. Every metaphysical spiritual teacher talked like this from the 18, late 1800s all through to now. All the musicians talked about it, whether it's jazz cats or rock and roll or 60s or Taylor Swift hinting at it, wishing that love would heal everything. And but look at all the complaining she does about the bad love. People love it because everybody thinks they have bad love. Okay, I'm starting to preach too much here. So the Jupiter Uranus is this time of April 19th, 20th, 21st. And there's something that's very special that's happening during that time period up to that full moon in April 22nd and 23rd. The full moon's at 749 on the 23rd of April at 4 Scorpio. It's going to be very 
intense, passionate, sexual. People are going to re-cement. A lot of people are going to have babies, get pregnant, jump into like new business relationships, friendships, rekindle the one they have, or try to find some. So a lot of people are going to be trying to find a higher octave so they don't mess up their relationships they, they want for their security or their love or whatever they've got going that pleases them and gives them a sense of family and communion and union with something outside of the self, separate self. So some people are going to be looking for higher consciousness. I imagine there's going to be uh, a new renaissance of metaphysical, spiritual research. Uh, and I think that all these people into yoga and meditation and, you know, Neoplatonism and Hermetics and magical pagan and crystals, all that stuff, you know, met, it's basically, it's not crystals that make some magic happen. It's the mind that goes with it. The car... You can have a really good car, but if you don't have the maps for where you're going. As Tim Leary said when he was at the Mayflower Bookshop years ago, <coughs> a few times, <coughs> that the Mayflower Bookshop had the books that were the, the it was, a, it was a, I told him it was the high school for Harry Potter, you know, the adult Harry Potter. It was like Star Wars maps. And... Um, and uh, Lord of the Rings. He said that the Mayflower Bookshop were the had the it was the bookstore for the illiterati and the intelligentsia and the illumination Illuminati, <laughs> the spiritual invisible college, you know. Um that they were the books for the maps. The books at Mayflower were the maps, Tim Leary said this, they were the maps to the astral and spiritual plane. And they in that whether you're getting high from kissing or legal or illegal substances. You're getting high from your family or your kids or music or your garden. He said, whatever you're getting high from, but especially drugs, acid. I mean, he was into it. I was debating against it. He was debating for it. But he said, you had to have those books or you were in trouble. You had to have maps to the astral and spiritual plane. And the astral plane is the plane of the soul where you go into the dream time. And when we go to sleep, we go into the astral plane and the spiritual planes for some who are ready. But we, even when you're awake and you just dream out a window or something, or you're hugging, or and you, you there's waking, there's dreams that happen when you're awake. So, we need this kind of knowledge. Now, the thing that's very exciting about this April nineteenth, <clears throat> twenty, we feel it now, but it's really hits very strongly eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth, twenty first, twenty second, twenty third. What's what's happening then? Well, there's a comet. There's a comet. Um, I'm trying to remember the, the name of it. I think it's like um, 12P Pons Brooks, Comet 12P. And it reaches perihelion about the 21st when this Venus midpoints Mars, Jupiter, and the sun squares Pluto in the sky. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're heading for the full moon on 23rd. I think that I'm not predicting what's going to happen, but normally you would think that there's a lot of endings and conclusions and completions and deep understandings of what we've done in the past and where we are now and what we need to go to do to go into the future. And if you can be careful not to party too much and you can try to purify yourself to be aware and awake during this time period, keep a journal, research and study. If great experiences come to you, yeah, go. Have fun. But try not to get high where you miss the bottom line. Try not to be depressed because you don't experience these fun times that are happening during these great aspects. You want If you get down too much, you want divine melancholy. By the way, this planet <clears throat> has a 71-year cycle, which makes it a kindred uh, sister planet to Halley's Comet. And Rudolf Steiner would approach this, um, in my imagination he would, as... 
if you're materialistic, this may make you selfish and materialistic, and you may act inappropriately that will affect the rest of your life into next life. That sun square Pluto is selfish people could be way more selfish. On the other hand, people who are really selfish, their, their time could be up. They could have some kind of spiritual revelation and all of a sudden, like Gates' ex-wife, you know, give away all your money, start giving away all your money to show you people that you're not attached to it, you know, and trying to help people with it or something. I don't know, you know. I, I do think that, that we're going to see some very significant deaths and turnarounds. And the stock markets, if they dip down, they may come way up again. But they could also have big turnarounds and dive down quite a bit for a minute. But I'm not, you know, my friend Ray Merriman, I do make predictions about the stock market. And when I do your individual chart, your astrological chart, I can predict stuff about money and and uh, career and relationships and calling and work, calling versus work and friendships and brothers and sisters and family and, you know, your your um, deeper matters of psychology and philosophy. Yeah, when I do those charts, I talk about money. But my friend Ray Merriman, he does it all the time. That's all he does is money markets. And he's really been doing it a long time. And nobody's right all the time, but he's got a good track record and a great name for himself. And he's got a yearly book on it. And he talks about the things I'm talking about in similar and, and different ways. I talk about it in different ways than he and in similar ways. Okay. Great guy, though, if you get to check out his stuff. There's a couple other guys running around doing that. Uh, that I know from way back. Bill Meridian is another one. A lot of the great astrologers, they're not practicing so much anymore. Robert Hand was, is a friend of mine. And we've traded readings way in the back, past. <clears throat> Dane Ruder used to come to my house and he stayed up for 11 days once. And Ray Merriman and I were hosting these, these big things with Doogie McLean and all these great astrologers would come in. A lot of great astrologers and Misha Kushi would come to the Ohm Cafe that, that I ran with Colleen Samadhi. So a lot has happened in the past that you're not maybe familiar with. And I think that all the planetary aspects, the planetary geometry of these planets and their cycles, like this, this uh, comet that's coming in in April at the exact timing of this Jupiter-Uranus and full moon. I'm like, it's pretty amazing. And it's associated with Halley's Comet. Now, remember, Mark Twain predicted that he would be born when Halley's Comet came and he would die. So check it out. Who's 71 years old, you know? Like, are people coming and going? Are there new babies coming in and other ones going out? This is a time where you can concretize your ideals. You can manifest your dream and your ideals. This is a huge time period for this. And it actually goes, it, it's in April, but it's May, June. You know, it goes right into May, June. And it goes for the next three or four years as a total transformation metamorphosis of the planetary consciousness. And either we're going to find peace with China and Russia or we're heading for such problems. We need to have people who want to negotiate, uh, not only have be prepared for war, we want to be prepared for peace and, and educate uh, human beings for spiritual inner sciences as well as outer and how to garden and have friends. I mean, we don't really, we have better psychology through medications. We, we need a better psych. You'd think that, that, the, that the doctors and the AMA would have advice on all the side effects of all these medicines and give you alternative, alternative healing techniques of like massage and um, macrobiotics or vegetarianism or food as medicine, um, Reiki, they should have all, everything. Eye reading, head reading, they should have everything. It would save money. And, it, and look at how many people we all know heal themselves naturally. A lot of different, wheatgrass therapy. Oh my God, that is really great. Wheatgrass therapy, check it out. Ann Wigmore's whole living food thing. And macrobiotics, I mean, I, could, I know thousands and thousands of people that, that have been self-healed. And I know people that went to the doctors and got messed up, but I know people that went to the doctors and got better. You, we each have to choose this for ourselves, but we need that freedom. We need that freedom to honestly research religion, philosophy, and science, and alternative healing techniques, and alternative lifestyle techniques that would enrich and enhance all society and the world around us. And I think that that is the explosion that's taking place with Jupiter 
Uranus. <clears throat> and there's resistance, but this comet is coming. And I think it's it's like another thing that I think is going to happen in April. And it's been already happening for a few months now. <clears throat> I have a lot of different approaches to life. And I've studied so much in my many, many years at Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan. Again, I'm on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube with songs and talks. Um, I hope you get to indulge in it and see what you think. But this is a time of a spiritual revolution. But there's a lot of craziness. The sun squared Pluto on the 21st of April. One has to be careful of being too selfish or fearful and holding back too much. On the other hand, projecting a dominating authority on other people would not be wise. It could have reactions when the moon squares Pluto on the full moon. So the 21st to 23rd has this Pluto. Pluto's regenerate or degenerate? Pluto's being in touch with your woundology but you may not be in touch with your higher self to allow you to have a, a bigger view that Christ would have or Buddha. Rise and sin no more. The sin of ancient India was acting out of separateness. That we're, In the spirit, we're all one. In the body, we're all unique expression of the oneness. And in our soul mind, <clears throat> we have the opportunity to bring harmony and wisdom and loving kindness and generosity and enlightenment to both spirit and body. And and so one of the things that's happening on the 19th to the 23rd and and for the next couple of months actually very well this could be a trigger for the reappearance of the Christ or the Christos in the etheric the return of the divine Sophia the Divine Feminine. <clears throat> I think people like Marianne Williamson, especially, but Haley, a lot of the women in politics are going to have catch their breath here. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we may see them rise quick. There's, there are certain people that will take a fall and other people are going to rise. And we're, we're praying and hoping that everyone will find their seat of the soul in the heart of compassion, loving kindness, and higher truth. But I think that this time period, very well, if you read Alice Bailey's <clears throat> The Appearance of Christ in the Etheric or Rudolf Steiner's appearance of the, Reappearance of the Christ in the Etheric, his whole motif is that, is that whatever happened at 400 B.C. to 400 or more A.D., we all got an I am in a sense of the solar radiance, the Michaelic rosy cross, spirit of the Rosicrucian, the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood and love ye one another. That whole idea that we could have a higher consciousness that forgives, it may not forget, don't forget so that you don't have to repeat the experience, but for transforming negative into positive. As Marion Woodman, another friend of Mayflower Bookshop, <clears throat> the author of Dancing in the Flames and The Pregnant Virgin, as she said, the wound has to become the womb of the second birth. And quoting Carl Jung in her own way, that which moves you and moves in you that you don't make conscious becomes your fate. And so it's up to us to make this conscious that there's an attempt for a spiritual being, whether you call it Hermes or the Christ or Sophia or Mari, Mary, a mother Buddha, Mary, Isis, the Virgin that the three wise men followed, to the virgin birth of Hermes Horus, known as Good Shepherd, Divine Pymander, and writes a sermon on the Mount, pre-Christian. Yeah, they are all good. There is no God unless we prove it by the way we live. And we need to demonstrate our love and patience and perseverance and endurance and our idealistic following that star, that divine virtue, sacred space within each individual, to follow that into our true calling and not just work to make money, not just work to find security. 
but securing our position in being co-creative with the future destiny of the world and the, the, the whole of ourself. And so I'm saying that in April, <clears throat> but it's already started and we're going for a couple months after that, the reappearance of the Christ in the etheric. And again, if you're thrown by the term Christ, think of the Greek Christos, think of Mithras in Persia, think of Sanat Kumara of ancient India, Think of St. Michael and the Divine Sophia, the Divine Feminine, the Goddess Gaia, speaking through the hearts of Our Lady, of every great cathedral, and each one of us is a walking cathedral. There's a higher love and truth that is kind of mothering groups of us. I don't mean to wax mystical, but the Christians would call it the mystical body of Christ. The Shekinah of the Jewish Rabbi Kabbalah, the ancient Kabbalah, the Babylonian Chaldean, ancient Egyptian Hermetic Kabbalah of Anna Kingsford, the, the most quoted woman. She wrote a book called The Finding of the Christ, right? And she's the most quoted woman in The Secret Doctrine by H.P. Blavatsky. So much for some of the not so or in st not so well studied anthroposophists who think Blavatsky didn't have anything to do with Christianity. But the most quoted thing is Finding the Christ by, by Anna Kingsford. And at the end of her life, she wrote the esoteric character of the Gospels, harping on the word in St. John's Gospel. And many of the ideas that Rudolf Steiner later uh, much elaborated on. Rudolf Steiner, in my opinion, he may have gone further, but that's a difficult conversation. But everything that he comes up with, Blavatsky said first, St. Michael. So I'm not putting Steiner down. He helped explain it and redeem us from a false Christianity, you might say. And in the long run, no one's false, by the way. It's very really difficult to say anything at all without being put down for it. So I just want to cover myself by saying, in the long run, we're all doing perfectly good. And that everything that's going on with us right now is perfect for us getting enlightened. But we're not getting enlightened. But everything's perfect if we would just wake up, right? Everything is perfect the way it is for us to get enlightened, but we're not getting enlightened. So I have, a, as a spiritual practice, that every once in a while throughout the day, I'll just take a deep breath, let my breath out, take a deep breath, empty my content of my thinking in my heart. And I'll think, everything's perfect, I'm just not getting it, but there's enlightenment everywhere for me. <laughs> and I <coughs> accept the way things are just for now, Ask for anything you like, but accept the way things are just for now and ask God or the universal mind or the wholeness of the divine great mother that envelopes the orc she's of this planet and penetrates to the very soul and core of the Persephone Inanna within each one of us. Ask for anything, but also pray that the divine will educate us and educate you, me, on what we should be asking for and striving for. <clears throat> and be patient. <clears throat> Ask for anything. Accept the way things are for now. And turn up your love, appreciation, compassion that you're still in the game. When we pray, we're kind of trying to talk to God. When we meditate, we're listening. So this time period of April, <clears throat> a lot of people are going to claim that they're talking to God. I had somebody the other day call me and say that they're talking to God, and God said that they should do this or that. I like to be an all-American transcendentalist like Emerson and Jefferson, Thomas Paine, Abe Lincoln, <clears throat> I think there's no God unless we prove it by the way we live. And that it's a dangerous thing. It's okay if you say that God's talking to you. or, I mean, somebody has to have God talk to them, right? We can't put down everybody that says that. So we, let, we have patience and we let people be who they are, but we also try to prove it by the way we live rather than just talking. Just let facts speak for themselves. 
you can just look around and see the, the you could be an amazing scientist and say that science and the Pentagon aren't destroying the planet, but you can also just look around and see how dirty it's getting and how tough it is to not have forever chemicals and toxins and everything. So I wanted to bring up this idea that this comet's coming and it's going to take things out of our life and bring new things in. And if you're over-materialistic, it might over-crystallize you and harden you. But if you've been trying to manifest your dream, this is a perfect time. And be very careful not to act out of separateness on the 21st of April. And on the 29th, there's Mars conjunct Neptune, which is often lies and, and fake-outs and getting cheated out of money. Be careful if somebody's offering you some giant money scam, and then you hit the Venus square Pluto, <clears throat> on the 1st of uh, May and we need to get into gardening then and by the moon conjunct Uranus Jupiter on the 8th of May and the new moon um, the new moon's in the 7th of May and it's really close to the conjunction it's pretty close to the conjunction of the Jupiter Uranus so May is going to really prove whether or not we got it and the sun Uranus on the 13th is really powerful the full moon we're talking about May the full moon on the 22nd is pretty powerful when Venus goes into Gemini. Venus conjuncts Jupiter. That's another place where a lot of good luck in the, in the second coming of, of the Christ, you know, where, where people are experiencing a renewal and rejuvenation. Now, to get to get to April 19th and 20th, it's going to be tricky. There's a solar eclipse where many astrologers are predicting the danger of, like, another war or escalation, or craziness, like that. The eclipse happens at 19 Aries, so Capricorn, Cancer, and Aries and Libra are particularly affected if you're in the mid-zone of those degrees. And <clears throat> I noticed that um, some of the richest people in the world, Bezos, Bezos, embezzling? No, Bezos. Be Bezos, Bezos. The, or is the Oz guy? Well, I can't even say his name. That's why we don't know what he's doing. But he's got Uranus opposing Saturn and then opposing Venus. So he's got to straighten up and help the world here where he's going to get thrown off his horse a little bit. And um, there's when you look at the some of the other guys, Gates, and uh, there's three or four of the richest guys in the world. And when I look at all the charts, they all tend to go kind of crazy, you know. They've started a little bit, but I'm thinking that the markets might take quite a dip around that eclipse of the 7th, 8th, 9th. Now, if it's already dipped, it might come way up again. The, probably Ray Merriman's the guy you want to talk to <laughs> about that. And um, <clears throat> and look what he's saying. And even that, you got, he'll tell you to take it with a grain of salt. Because Mercury's going retrograde on the uh, first... I can hear my dog barking and whining. First of April. So we got to get to that holy time of April. And we got to get past the lunar eclipse at 5 Libra. That's happening on March 25th. Right? And there's a Venus conjunct Saturn on the 21st of March. That's where love the one you're with. Or make connections with people that you hope are going to last for many lifetimes. The conservatives get stronger. The liberals get weak. But we're all strong if we have a spiritual practice, and that's around the 21st of March. And the, uh, the, the spring equinox happens on the 19th, so that's a great time to pray. Sun-Neptune on March 17th, so the 15th, the 16th, 17th, 18th. you got to be a little careful that you're practical. It's a great time for arts and music and the muse and uh, the d ideal dream. The struggle is to get the ideal dream and all these fantasies we have of happiness to manifest in practical ways that's good for everybody. Like the way I heard it from the Holy Grail is that if you had a good day and you helped a bunch of people today and you made money and you did your job good and you helped people, you know, uh, when I was younger, they said you could celebrate then. But tomorrow morning, we have to ride out again in search of the Grail that's going to nourish everybody on the planet and help the whole planet to be happy. I think it... As you get more mature or older, the ideal is to not have to be recovering all the time from some bad habit and not, not to have to recover from something every time you wake up in the morning. 
So my first spiritual teacher thought that it was more important to work on the right thing to do and not be so worried about getting rid of the wrong things. Like it's great if you can get rid of the wrong things and the addictions and the negative habits and anger. And, and anger is the worst non-virtue, you know. And um, yeah, that's what the Tibetans say, you know. And judgment of other people that somehow you're better and they're dirty is the beginning of separating yourself from humanity. And it's a subtle anger, according to the Dalai Lama, when I hung out with him, he talked to me about that. And uh, he said, maybe you have a subtle anger problem. I said, I don't have any anger problem. And I went, whoa, where'd that come from? So, so judgment, you know, it takes a long time. Like the last judgment is called the last judgment because that's the best time to make a judgment about what happened. Until then, until, until whatever we're doing helps the world to be a better place and brings peace to the planet, be humble, keep studying, be quiet once, three times a day, once to three times a day. And um, by the way, there's another comet that's been happening this week. <clears throat> and um, comes the comet C2021 S3 Pan Stars. Uh, that comet is happening in early Capricorn affecting early, there's, there's two comets, one's affecting early Aries and one's affecting early Capricorn. So thus it's affecting early Cancer. You know, you could almost say the first half of, but especially the beginning of Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Taurus. And what comets do is they bring things quickly up or down and they, they flash light. You get these insights that you have to write journals down and put them into practice. Otherwise they go right by you. And, um, Comets can bring quick changes to what's going on in your life. People rise and fall. People are taken out. People are put in. New new folks rise in the ranks. Like I know a bunch of bands that are just, and musicians that are just starting up and they're really making it, starting to make it fast. And other ones that just got knocked out of the picture that everybody thought were going to be really big. So it's happening everywhere. And we have to have compassion for suffering that doesn't bring enlightenment. And so um, the new moon happened on the 10th of March and the moon conjuncted Neptune. So there's very strong ideals for the future. And then people are stuck with their pathologies and their wounds. And people are stuck on the past of trying to maintain security. And it's very hard to be here now. When you sit in silence, you sit up straight and sit in silence and you're listening, you, your mind becomes still. So you can listen to the stillness of your heart listening. Did you get that? Meditation is mediating the highest and deepest of everything. But you have to sit up straight so your spine's connected to earth and star. You let your breath out and you breathe and empty all your content and your perceptions. You empty it into your heart. This is meditation. Real meditation. I don't care... If you believe it or not, if you do it, it works. You sit up straight and let your breath out and take a deep breath and tell your head to show you everything it knows. Or breathe in from the bottom up, from the earth up, forming um, a cup at your heart that your head can just fall into. But you're seated in your heart. The heart is the seat of the soul. I remember telling Marianne Williamson that years ago. and She was going to tell me, I told her the guy who had to see the soul book didn't have the... He didn't know where it was, you know, and so she said, well, I'm going to tell him, and so she did. But we got to help each other to grow and be successful. But if that successful is selfish, it cuts you off from life. So when you sit still, when you sit up straight and you sit still, the stillness within you eventually speaks truth about what you should do and where you should go, and it will give you digested insights the stillness is free from the fast-moving world. Freedom from the self is a zen-like sudden awakening, a be here now. The power of now is all about this, sitting up straight and listening with your heart in total radical stillness and waiting, you know, five to seven minutes and do it every day and you'll deepen and deepen your intelligence and your capacity to love 
and your ability to attract good things into your life rather than you have to work so hard to go get them and you can't get it and it's not coming. So I hope I've, I hope I've talked to your heart so a, a little bit and um, I hope I've invoked the brother that I am in trying to be can help you find a meditation practice and a way of looking at astrology in, in looking for this higher virtue. I remember Henry Ford II used to tell me when I would do his chart a lot, I did his chart. I did Lee Iacocca's chart the night before he fired him for Henry Ford. I actually didn't know till later. Um, he, he joked around with me a bit about that, but I gave him all the insights into it. But that's another story. I think it's important to mention names here and there. People put me down for it sometimes, but it's really important that the richest people in the whole world, the richest people in the whole world, not the millionaires, the billionaires, the trillionaires, and the, the poorest people in the world. I heard that Mrs. Clinton thought that she had the wrong astrologers. Well, I don't know what to say about that. Maybe it's just gossip. I, I, I think it, it's a myth reality. It's probably real. But, but I know that astrology can't give you... You don't want to use astrology to get pleasures and money and joy. You want to use astrology to get insight into timing. And you want to listen with your meditative stillness in your heart to what life is teaching you. And so when you have these major aspect times that I'm pointing out, and I'm going to continue to talk in the next talk about the other aspects coming in the next three years. And when these pivotal aspects and these dates I gave you, the virtuous and non-virtuous opportunities increase. So if you do non-virtuous bad karma things, it's going to multiply with the effect it has. But if you do virtuous good karma and help yourself to help others, help others to help themselves, and you sacrifice negative habits for positive, when you act virtuously and holy and sacred and patiently and generously, on these pivotal points, it will open the door to etheric clairvoyance. At the very minimum, intellectual clairvoyance is possible, by the way. But the heart is a little better, a little more, a little more deeper in awe. It's clearer about the future and where you stand. And these, these pivotal aspects, these days that I'm telling you, this is where if you do good or bad things, you know, good or bad karma things, it's going to have like three times, seven times, 12 times the effect. So, if you want to get rich inwardly so you're not intimidated by outer crass materialistic wealth, get rich inside, meditate, study astrology, get my book, Astrological Aspects of the Art, and my other book, Hermetic Rosicrucian Grail Tarot. You'll be supporting my work, and um, feel free to donate for this. If you got a lot on this, please donate, because usually in the old days, I would charge 20 to to $100 uh, for a talk. You know, people would pay... So these are weird times, and nobody wants the truth anymore, and they just want to numb out and escape, and we have to stop that. We need to wake up to our Christ cosmic consciousness, our Buddha nature, our Buddha mind, the Dharma, the spiritual proclivity, the, the Ein Sof of the Kabbalist, the, the wisdom of the selfless, in virtue, connection to all life. This is Robert Thibodeau. Mayflowerbookshop.com on YouTube, TikTok, Robert Thibodeau, Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan. At your higher self service and not your crazy circus, unless it's going to be real fun for all of us. Bless your heart.